Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a self-signed certificate. So that will pretty much be this part of this diagram, this whole left part. And the reason it's called a self-signed certificate is because it hasn't been signed by a certificate authority. Now, if you remember in the previous videos, I said the CA or certificate authority need to verify who you are before they can issue you a certificate. And for testing purposes, what I'm gonna do is sign my own certificate. And that's why it's called self-signed. And because it's self-signed, I can put whatever name I want here. Now to create a self-signed certificate, you will need something called OpenSSL. And I think this comes default in Mac and Linux machines, but I'm not sure how to get it on a Windows machine. I have heavily used this article, which I'll put in the description to help me understand how to create a self-signed certificate with OpenSSL. So if you want kind of a deeper look into how to do it, aside from this video, then go ahead and look at this post. But for now, what I'm gonna do is open up a terminal window and start writing some commands. So to create a certificate, let's first check we have OpenSSL on our machine. And to do that, we type in this command. And if we do, then we should have it. Let's come up with this. And now I'm gonna type in a command. And before I hit enter, I'll explain what each kind of keyword is doing. So open a cell, um, rec, which, here we go. So I have done it before, and ZSH autocomplete has autocompleted it for me. So what this line does is uses open a cell to request a certificate, so that's what REQ is, and it requests a certificate in this format, so X509, and this is a cryptography standard for public key certificates. Then the new key keyword generates a private key, which is of RSA, which is an RSA algorithm, and it has a 2048 bit key length. So this is also standard for private keys. And node means that we don't wanna have a passphrase for a private key, which makes it easier to, to use. We don't need to have a password stored or remembered. Ideally, if we're using it for a production, we'd have one, but in this case for tests, we, we don't need a passphrase. Key out means that we want to store this private key with a certain name. And the name in our case is mykey.pm. So that's how we'll, we'll store this private key. And PM is kind of a, a file format for, for storing keys. Now with this private key, we're gonna use this out keyword to create a certificate. And the certificate will last for three, six, five days. So just that, that's a year. So that's what this command is gonna do when I hit enter. Now, before I do this, I forgot to say, be sure to be in a directory that you want the certificate to, to be in. So at the moment, I think this is on my home directory, but I don't want it to be here, I want it to be somewhere else. So let's go into my desktop. And then we'll write that same command. And hit enter. So now it's generating my key, and it needs a few details from me to put into the certificate. So bear in mind, because this is test, it can be whatever you want. I'm just going to fill this in with some test names. And there we have it. Now it's created our certificate. So let's see where it is. Here we go. So it's created our cert.pm and our key.pm. So these are, are the two important files that we need. As you can see in, in this diagram, these the certificate and the private key are together in, in one file, and at the moment we have them as two separate files. So to combine them into one file to use for signing a PDF, we need to write another OpenSSL command. So before I write that command, I just want to show you what they look like um, inside the desktop. So let me open this. And here we go. So this is my key.pm. This is the private key which you can't see, but you can open that in VS Code or something. Uh, and the certificate is here. So let me open that for you now. So you can have a look. And you have this, this certificate. And this is our private key. Okay. Now, usually you wouldn't share the private key with anybody else, but because this is a video, I've just created it and I'm probably gonna delete it afterwards. I don't really care. 
Okay, so now let's combine them. So to do that, we need to open a cell again. Let me clear this, come out of the desktop. Actually, go back into the desktop. And what we need to do is write um, this. So what this is going to do is using the PKCS12 architecture again, we're going to create something called keystore P12. And then we're going to use the key here, private key, and a certificate. So we're going to put the key in and the certificate in to make this file. Let's do that now. And here we have an option to add a password to our file. I would strongly suggest not to add one for testing because it gets confusing when you have to sign and put a password in each time. So I would say leave that blank and hit enter again. Hit enter here again. And there we have it. We have our keystore.p12 file. The eagle eyed amongst you will see it popped up here. And let me open that in VS Code for you to see. And you can't see it, but it is there. Cool, so there we have it. This is our keystore.p12 file that we're going to use to sign our PDF in the next video. Thanks for watching.